<laughs> even if you favour working software over comprehensive documentation. <laughs> and please save the uh, tender rotten fruit until later, okay? Right. So why do you need documentation? Because I don't know what you're doing. So who the hell am I? Well, I could be a new starter. Um, I could say, okay, what are the main parts of the system? Where's well, the simple big picture? And everybody can like shuffle and look and, you know, <laughs> you know. I've been there quite a few times when they've been around the right on teams. I, alternatively, I could be the sheltering manager. I could be the person who's, who's trying to protect your team, give them space to develop. Um, I need a vague idea of what's going on. Um, I also need a warm, fuzzy feeling that you actually know what you're doing. And by putting together a coherent picture of the system, that can help. Right. Another reason, because you don't know what you're doing. That's why you need documentation. Um, some bits are clear, but other bits are fuzzier, older, broader, wide bits of the system. It's not my domain, it's not my area. Again, I've been there quite a few times as well. I know my bit, it's like one of those adventure games, you know, you know you can see the bit around you, but nothing else. So what documentation do you need? You do not need 200 page specs. As somebody who used to work at Barclays, I can tell you that definitively. A clean, understandable code base with clear domain abstractions at its heart is a good start. But, beyond that, I would say mostly pictures. Maps of the world, which could be hand-drawn on flip chart sheets, as we've done before. Um, plus, some more detailed documentation of trickier things, like complex code, code, sorry, config you don't do very frequently. Things like that git command you can never remember, and so on. I find that wiki is usually good for this, and it means you can get your code back when you've trashed it in git again. Okay, so, what sort of maps? Tribal maps, they're meant to be meaningful to the natives, yeah, to the people who are actually going to use them. Um, so here be dragons, well it's not particularly useful, but you know, if you could say more usefully, Fred met a dragon here once, it was definitely a dragon, it wasn't a tiger, and the way he got away from it was this. That's far more useful than just writing here be dragons on the side, okay? So I know there are areas of the code that people have never wanted to go into, but it's good to know why. Okay, maps of your world. Um, real maps, if you look at real maps, the different levels, got different information on them. Your OS land ranger can have contours on, your road atlas won't have, it'll just have towns. Obviously, those people who don't know what a road atlas is, it's like a sat nav but on paper. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> right. In the software world, what does this mean? Um, if anybody's not read Simon Brown, if you're responsible for, for to trying to do some of this documentation, if you've not read Simon Brown stuff on like context containers, components, and classes, please go and read it, it's good stuff. For bigger, more complex systems, if you've got a lot of NFRs, if there's a lot of the system outside of your software, then things like viewpoints and perspectives can really help to chop it down into the, the important bits of like security and scalability and so on. It's an IE standard, but don't let that put you off. Woods and Rosansky's book on this is very good. Right, how does this work in practice? Choose a core, non-volatile subset of your system. If you can't decide on that, maybe you've got more problems with your system than lack of documentation. Be selective about what you're going to document. Stick the pictures on the wall around you so you notice when they go out of date. And keep it up to date. See, be selective. The main, main problem with a lot of people with documentation is they don't want to do it because they don't want to keep it all up to date because they choose to do too much of it. In general, let the code tell the detailed what. The documentation should be the high level what and the why. Why does the, why does the system work this way? Right. Another and one place that often needs attention is environments. Maps of what talks to what in dev, test, stage, and production. Again, this is a big where there be dragons thing for a lot of people. It's like, well, we don't know what happens to it. If updating these artifacts, keeping them up to date is painful, maybe it's time you automated your environments. How does this work in practice? Finally, ask some questions. Who is this document, document for? When and why will you use it? How long should it live for? Is it enduring? Is it one you want to write up, stick on the wall and refer to on a regular basis? Or is it transient? Are you just drawing an object diagram to help you work out you know, your thoughts and then you throw it away? You don't leave it on a file server for somebody to find in about three years' time and think it's maybe an accurate representation of the system. You throw it away now, okay? And don't forget, at the end of the day, as the pragmatic person say, it's all writing except when it's drawing. Thank you.
to, to ask questions if anybody wants to ask them or just to heckle and stuff like that. I'm not to anything. Even though there's a pineapple at the back, I thought. No, I, I, I really like the pictures I 